Aerospace in the Montreal area has a, a long history, I understand. Indeed, uh, for uh, many years actually, um, there's been expertise and uh, lots of strength towards the aerospace. Um, it's one of the largest aerospace uh, hub in the world actually, and we're very proud, uh, very dynamic as well. Lots of opportunities and R&D being done here. Now, historically, many areas are, are airframe centric, some are engine centric, but I understand in the Montreal, it's both. I mean, Rolls Royce is here, Pratt & Whitney mm -hmm. is here, Bombardier, you know, so, and, and many, many other contractors. Indeed, actually, it's one of the only places, if not the only place where you could build a whole airplane uh, from in, within 100 miles. And tell me a bit about my HTT. So we basically, um, 35 years ago, started actually from the space industry and grew into other areas. We've been working as well with Siemens for 35 years. That relationship was symbiotic. We've developed technology. We've grown to be one of their largest technology partner, uh, focusing on um, development in R&D in the uh, simulation area. Now, simulation strictly aerospace, or, or, or do you serve other industries also? We serve other industries. So we started from the aerospace. Through aerospace is still a strength, but we've grown into other industries and actually uh, are also uh, being involved into uh, Industry 4.0 and other initiatives which are going across all the industries. Now, simulation, of course, is uh, it's been around a long time. Industry 4.0 is relatively new as a concept at this point. It is. Simula is simulation going to be uh, an essential brick in that Industry 4.0 wall? Definitely. Um, the digital twin, where the simulation is at the center of, uh, is essential for Industry 4.0 to take place. You need to be able to simulate things in order to have the right physics to develop faster and to be able to build everything that will be uh, the milestones for being able to optimize and capture uh, real-time data and optimize on, on a continuous basis. Now, Mark, uh, we, historically we think of, of design and, and manufacturing of a product, but what about jigs, fixtures, tooling, the machines that make the products in the end? Simulation, uh, Industry 4.0, digital twin, also useful here? Very much. It goes even beyond that. It would go into the process. Simulation was historically, yes, um, it came from aerospace, so uh, R&D was, uh, I guess, used in other areas throughout the years, but it came from there. Now uh, we're modeling processes, uh, which could be a baking process, people helping, uh, people making breads, as, a, as an example. Historically, you would not have considered to, to be a technology issue, but it is. So in all areas, in all industries, we see simulation and digital twin making a difference. In the future, Mark, do you expect that um, uh, when we build a, a new factory, Greenfield or, or a retrofit a factory, before we clean it out and, and think about organizing assembly lines, process flow, this kind of thing, will, will engineers be strapping goggles on and then walking through a factory virtually? That's going to be one of the ways of doing it. Certainly the goggles and the VR are a key part of uh, what could be done, but there will be many other ways. What's going to be important actually, it's not only the product, it's the product, the factory, and thinking of what the product will, how it will be used. Those three have to be brought together in order to have an efficient uh, digital uh, twin that will be enabled. Now, it's um, uh, outsourcing, globalization, of course, it's, it's the new trend now. Um, a, a company may have a vendor base that is literally around the world. Mm -hmm. And all the sub-assemblies and components must come together, they have to fit, they have to work at the same time. Is this kind of global collaboration, is that a factor here? So for us at Maya, one of the things that sets us apart, actually, is uh, integration and democratization. Integrating different technology within, from one vendor, multiple vendors, so the integration, put it, bringing everything together is a key and uh, enabling people which are not uh, analysts, which are not structural analysts, as an example, we need to, be, to do both in order to have this to be efficient or to make it real and make it efficient. Does this go beyond the engineer? Does this go to the front office? We're talking about man senior management at this point? Well, actually, as some examples, we're doing um, MDM multidisciplinary optimization, which will include cost, which will include materials, which will include shipping, uh, logistics. All aspects are being impacted. So ultimately, will we have one piece of software that will run your entire business from the loading dock at the back to the financial planning at the front? No, because actually there will always be initiatives which will come from areas, different areas. Well, where What you will get though, actually, all those software will talk together. That indeed will happen. Will aerospace be the industry that leads implementation of this advanced software? Well, they have strengths in some areas and definitely in those they will. So technology, uh, light weighting, all those things are key in aerospace. Definitely they will lead in those areas. But they are also learning from other industries such as automotive as they have more volume in automotive. So some learning, actually it goes both ways. From baking bread to space boosters, advanced PLM will be the future, says Mark LaFontaine of Maya HTT.